What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of PS4 Jailbreak Tutorials. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to offline activate your local accounts on your jailbroken PS4, which is essentially the equivalent of on a retail PS4 connecting to PSN, basically signing into your PSN account on a retail PS4 that will activate that local account uh, and turn it into an activated account. Obviously, we can't do that on a jailbroken PS4 because jailbroken PS4s can't connect to PSN, so you can't sign in to activate the account. But what you can do instead is, through a roundabout way, essentially activate the account manually uh, using this offline activator. And there's a few reasons why you might want to do this. Mainly, it's to get access to features that are normally locked on local accounts and require an activated account in order for those features to be enabled. For example, the ability to copy your save data from your USB storage device or to a USB storage device. As you can see, you just get this error message on a local account. But if the account was activated, we could access that feature. Also, remote play, which is accessible through the homebrew enabler, which enables this. But, uh, you know, if you don't have the homebrew enabler running, you can't access the remote play connection settings. Whereas if you have an activated account, you can access this without requiring to run Hen uh, or Mira or anything like that. Um, I can also make it easier for setting up remote play. So yeah, there's a few reasons there. And the good thing about this is that if you have a PSN account on another PS4 that you use, you know, maybe a retail PS4 that you use to connect to PSN with, or on a PS5, maybe you have a PS5 account, then you can offline activate your jailbroken account using the same account ID for that profile, and then your save files will be transferable between your jailbroken PS4 and say your PS5 or your other PS4 that's on the latest firmware. So you can take a save that you've basically modded on your jailbroken PS4 and transfer it to you know another PS4 or a PS5 that's connected to PSN and access that modified save file uh, without having to use something like Save Wizard. So yeah, it, it gives you a few advantages. So let's go ahead and activate this account. So generally, it's recommended that you create a new account and activate that account instead of your main account, because if you activate your main account, it can cause issues with your save files, like corrupted save files. It can also cause issues with your trophies, kind of corrupt your trophies. So it's recommended to create a new account and activate that. Uh, you can, of course, activate your main account if you wish, which is what I'm going to do. So the way that the saves generally get corrupted is that if you activate an account uh, with a certain account ID and then you load those saves up and, you know, save the game with that new ID and then you activate the account again, the same account with a different ID later on, then those saves that were saved on the old account ID will be corrupted now because they're for a different account ID. So that's where the issues with the kind of save corruption comes in. If you've never activated the account before and then you're just activating the account once um, and you're just going to stay with that PSN account ID and not change it, then the saves should be OK. But it's not a guarantee. So, you know, obviously, if you want to be safe, then make a new account, a new local account and then activate that one and leave your main account separate not activated. That way you're not in any risk of messing up your trophies or your save files. So yeah, you've you've been fairly warned there, I hope. So anyway, let's go ahead and go into the internet browser, load up our exploit host, whichever one you want to use. So I'm still sticking with caro218.ir for now. And we'll go ahead and load up our exploit. So that's our WebKit exploit loaded. Then we'll load the jailbreak. And that's the jailbreak loaded. So first of all, I would recommend running gold hen so that you get access to FTP. Because one of the things that can happen when you activate your account is that you can lose your avatar. If you have an avatar picture set on your account, it can disappear when you activate it. And I'll show you guys how to fix that. So you run Gold Hen so you get access to FTP. And then once you've run Gold Hen, you can then run the web activator. If we run that, it will go ahead and give us our page to activate the account. So you can see all your accounts will be listed in here. You just select the account you want to modify. And local accounts, ones that are not activated, will just show up with all zeros as the account ID. So you can activate the account with any ID. You can just make a fake ID, like, you know, 
by add to at the end, then you could activate that and it would work. It would show us an activated account, even though it's not a legitimate account ID, it doesn't matter. It will still work. So that's fine. You can do that, but obviously you won't be able to transfer saves between, you know, your PS4 and another PS4 if you're activating it with a fake ID. In order to be able to transfer the saves between one PS4 and another PS4, you need to activate the account using the same account ID as the account that you're using on your PS5 or on your other PS4. So in order to get the account ID of a legitimate PSN account that you use, we need to switch over to the computer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the store, the PlayStation store. So store.playstation.com head to this website and then sign in. So before you actually log in, you can type in the username and password, head up here to the top right if you're using Google Chrome and go to more tools and developer tools or control shift I on the keyboard to open up the developer tools. From here, you wanna to go to the network tab right here and then sign into your account. And you can see all of the stuff that pops up here in the right hand corner. There we go. So we've logged into our account now. And then in the filter section, you're going to search for the term get profile. So if you just type in get PRO, it should come up. You've got two things that should pop up here. So you've got get profile. If I click this one and go to the response, there's nothing. Try the second one. If I go to the response on this one, you can see if we scroll along here. You can see it shows up. So we've got account ID and then the account ID is right here. So we're going to copy that account ID. But that is not the account ID that you want to put into this box because it's in decimal and we have to convert it to a hexadecimal number. So copy the account ID and then go to a decimal to hexadecimal converter. Again, I'll link all this stuff in the description. Uh, paste in the account ID and click convert and that will convert it to a hexadecimal number. And that is the number, the account ID number that you want to enter into the account activator. So. We'll go ahead and type this in. Okay, so I've gone ahead and entered mine now and we're gonna click set and activate and it should say it activated successfully. Remember it's 16 characters long. So, you know, if it's a if you've entered the wrong length, it will give you an error message. So make sure you enter the ID correctly. So PSN ID set successfully. We can now close the internet browser. And as you can see, as I mentioned in my case, my avatar picture has disappeared. So let me just quickly show you guys how to fix that. So if you if that happens to you, if you go into the settings and you go down to system, system information just to get your IP address. And then once you have your IP address and you're and you're running Gold Hen, which has an FTP server built in, you can then switch back over to the computer, run a FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP, and then type in uh, the IP address of your PS4 and type in 2121 as the port number and connect. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into system data. We're gonna go into PRIV, and then we're gonna go into the cache. And then we're gonna go to profile and then your profile show up. So I think the top one is my main profile here. Yeah, cause this has the, this has the uh, avatar images in here. And then all you need to do is grab this online JSON file, which I will link in the description. It's part of a zip archive with a bunch of other avatar stuff. So if I right click and edit this in notepad, you can see if I scroll along, we've got first name and last name. So I'm just gonna enter modded underscore warfare as my first name and then just delete the last name and save it. That way my name will not change when I copy this over. So I can then copy that online.json file in. And now if I go back in here and go back to my profile, select it, back out, you can see it has now set the avatar back, even though the account is activated. So that's how you fix that if you run into that issue. If you don't know how to make your avatar even show up in your profile in the first place, I covered it in a previous video. I think it was episode eight where I covered how to customize the kind of home screen and stuff. So yeah, I'll link it in the description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. So anyway, now we have the account activated. If I go back into settings and I go down to application save data management and save data in system storage, copy to USB storage device, uh, we can click OK. So I'm still getting the error message, which means I have to restart my PS4. So we'll just go ahead and restart the PS4 to be able to access 
those features. Okay, so we've booted back in after the restart. So if I go back into settings and I go down to, oh, look, you can see account management now shows my avatar as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, if I now go down to application, save data management, save data and system storage, copy to USB storage device. As you can see, this time it works because the account is activated. I can now copy my save files to my USB. So let's, as an example, copy our modded saves that we created for Days Gone back in the previous episodes where I showed you how to use a, a, a web trainer to mod games. I modded Days Gone with that web trainer. I also showed you guys how to find your own cheats in a game and I used Days Gone as an example. So I've got some modded saves now created for Days Gone because of those videos. So we'll just select all of our saves for Days Gone and copy them to the USB drive, which is something we would not have been able to do before. And because we've activated this account with the same account ID that I have on my PS5, one of the accounts I have on my PS5, I should be able to load these saves, import these saves onto my PS5 and load up this modified save file from my jailbroken PS4 on my retail PS5 that's on the latest firmware. Same goes for another PS4 that's on the latest firmware. You can do the same thing. So yeah, now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and eject the USB and plug it into my PS5 and see if we can get those saves to be recognized. Okay, so before we switch over to the PS5, here's the save running on the PS4, just to show that there's no trickery going on. You can see I'm running this save here on our jailbroken PS4, and we've got 84% uh, in fuel in the motorcycle. And you can see our modified credits in the bottom left-hand corner, the modified skill points, 900 and... 98 skill points so we'll try and get the save loaded on the ps5 okay so here we are on the ps5 so all we have to do i've got my usb drive plugged in that has the saves on it that we just exported from our ps4 so i'm going to go to settings go down to basically the same place right save data and game app settings save data for ps4 and we go to usb drive and we'll just click ok select all and wait for the copy option to appear anytime now it's only 141 megabytes there we go copy and that will copy those saves to our internal storage on the ps5 and again i know i'm not saying that everybody watching this is oh yeah everybody's got a ps5 i mean you can do this on another ps4 that's on you know the latest firmware jesus i don't know if my ps5's got a problem with the disk drive but it's insanely loud when it spins up so yeah, anyway, so I've copied the saves over to my PS5 now onto the system storage. So we'll play Days Gone and see if I can load those same saves up. Okay, and there we go. You can see there's a continue option showing up there. So let's hit that. Now I did not have any saves on here before. I should have probably shown that before I uh, before I did this. But So this is literally just loading up the saves that we copied from our PS4. Okay, so we loaded up the save file. As you can see, the same save file, if I get off the bike, you can see we have 84% in the gas tank. And then if we go to our inventory, you can see all of the modified credits for all of the different encampments. And also if I go down to skills, we've got the 46 skill level, 998 skill points. So all of that stuff is there. So we have successfully loaded up that save file on our PS5. Basically just transferred it from the PS4 to the PS5 because our account on the PS5 has the same account ID as the account on our PS4 because we activated that account on the PS4, the jailbroken PS4, with the same account ID. So the saves are transferable. So that is how that works. And you can basically just use this instead of something like the save wizard um, because obviously you can just, you know, load up a save on your jailbroken PS4 if it's activated with the same account uh, as, you know, your PS5 or another PS4 that's on the latest firmware. Then use a trainer on your jailbroken PS4 to modify the credits, the items, the skill points and any other values that stick to the save file. And then you can save your game and export it to a USB, import it on your PS5 or your PS4 that's on the latest firmware and load up that save on that PS4 or PS5 and have access to those to that modded save file on that device. So I know some people will be wondering, can you do it the other way around, like take a save file from the PS5 or from a PS4 on the latest firmware and transfer it to the jailbroken PS4? No, because you can't go from, you can't transfer a save file that's on a higher firmware down to a PS4 that's on a lower firmware. 
but you can go from a PS4 that's on a lower firmware and transfer that save to a PS4 that's on a higher firmware or a PS5. Um, so yeah, that's that. it'll work from the jailbroken PS4 to another PS4 or PS5, but not the other way around. So yeah, that's basically how it works. Now stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to be covering remote play setup, not just setting up remote play over your local connection, but also over the internet so you can access your jailbroken PS4 remotely from anywhere. So I'll be covering that in the next video, but hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.